chain, break every chain, break every chain. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. There's an Hello, everyone. We are continuing this journey through Romans with Romans 15, verse 4. And I love it because it reminds us that the Bible is the living word of God. So it wasn't just for the people in the past. It is relevant to us today in our current context always. So it says, for everything that was written in the past was written to teach us. So that through the endurance taught in the scriptures and the encouragement they provide, we might have hope. Make me more like thee, Jesus. Make me more like thee. What would have to change in our lives for us to be more like Jesus? In that song, it goes on and says, Give me the heart of love, love. And in our lives, body, soul, and spirit, God wants all of them to change so that we are more like Jesus. Jesus, the one who came to earth and died on the cross and forgave us of our sins. Jesus, the one who's in heaven preparing a place for us so one day we will be with him in heaven. And we thank God for giving us a Savior, Jesus. And now we want to ask God to help us to be more like him, to be more like Jesus, to settle issues in our lives that make us different than Jesus. Settle issues in our lives that would take us away from God rather than closer to our relationship with God. And we want God to teach us how to see things so that love is seen in our lives and love is expressed through us. Well, one of the things it's gonna start out with is forgiveness. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God gave Jesus so that we could experience forgiveness in our hearts and our lives for the things that we have done 
that are offensive to God. And we want to be united in unity. You with me, me with you. As a family of God, we want unity within us. And we want to have a life filled with peace, not arguments, not debates. Peace. Peace that passes understanding, that comes from God. Now, when the Holy Spirit flows into your life, into your body, into your soul, into your spirit, it's going to affect you. It's going to affect you and fill your heart. It talks about this in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 23 that we can become blameless in Christ because he forgives us. Have you ever thought of anything you've done that then you've gone to God and prayed and he's forgiven you? And if you've gone and he's forgiven you, don't beat yourself up in your mind. Accept what he's done for you. Have faith and hope and love that comes into your heart. 1 Corinthians 13 speaks about it. It comes into your heart from God. So you become a more loving person. And that love will express itself in the way that you treat others and the things that you do. And that love will express itself by who you start to become. You become a person who's been transformed by God. And God wants us to be loving people. He wants us to have love and forgiveness in our homes and in our church together. And he wants us to be filled with faith, faith in him, joy, unspeakable and full of glory. It's in our hearts. And peace, Peace that's so hard for us sometimes to deal with until we come to the understanding that peace comes without us fully understanding. It's a gift from God. And he can give you peace even in difficult, troublesome times. He can give you peace in a time when you're really struggling with something. You see, what you want is the love of God that he offers to you, but he offers to you that love conditional on your welcoming him, asking Jesus to forgive you of your sins and walking a life of faith with him and in a godly relationship. So it's going to affect our relationship with other people. Is there anybody who you're kind of angry with that you need to forgive? Well, then you step forward in faith and ask God to help you and you express love and you grant forgiveness. You grant forgiveness to some people who've done something that's very wounded to you because you love them through the grace of God. And you want to have love and joy and peace. You want to have long suffering and kindness and gentleness and faithfulness. You see it all in Galatians 5 and 22 and 23. Those are the expressions of God working in you. Love. Oh. Peace. That comes into you from God. And long suffering. It doesn't come because you've never gone through something. It often comes because you've had to go through something. And if we're not going to grow in our relationship with God and te reach out in faith and touch other people in their lives, we're going to have to be more like Jesus. We're going to have to find ourselves being transformed by the power of God. And Ephesians talks to us about this and talks to us about the need of this. In 4 and 23, 32, I mean. We want to change what's in our hearts. What's in your heart to get even with somebody? What's in your heart to make somebody endure what you're doing? Or to forgive somebody? As God has forgiven us. Have you ever done something in your life that you need to be forgiven of? You know, so often people 
accept Christ in their life and ask him to be their savior. And then they'd go and do something that violates what the relationship with God is. You come back to God and you ask Jesus to forgive you of your sins and he forgives and he restores you and he cleanses you so that the forgiveness of sins is experienced in your life and the peace of God is released in you. God's peace. Now God wants to work in you and in me in a supernatural way by the anointing of his Holy Spirit. So you welcome Jesus into your life as Savior and you welcome the Holy Spirit into your life to guide and step your and direct your steps in life. So that step by step you go down the path that he has created for you. And step by step you do what he has asked you to do. And step by step you get closer to him in your relationship. If you've accepted Christ as your savior and messed up and done something, don't walk away. Walk back to Jesus and ask forgiveness again. Don't think that it's going to be that you can just live an ungodly life. No. He wants you to live a godly life. He wants you to live a spiritual life and be filled with his faith and his hope and his peace and his trust in him. And that's going to mean that your life is going to be transformed from what it once was to what God wants it to be now. God wants to be working in you so that you become a new creation in Christ Jesus. So take time and pause and say, Lord, show me the things that I've gone and done that are wrong. And when he shows you, ask him to forgive you. And when he's forgiven you, ask him to give you his power through his spirit in you to do his will. And then you step out in faith and you do things that God wants you to do. You'll see the world around you change. What you once liked, you won't like anymore. You'll see around you the world around you transformed into something that's good or bad and you'll know the difference. And when you see it, you go with what's good. What God has that brings you peace. What God has that brings you joy. What God has that brings you strength. You'll go God's way. So don't let the things that come along in life get you off the path that God's created for you. When you fail to ask forgiveness and receive the joy of the Lord back in your heart. And take steps of faith and see the world around you transformed and impacted. Will some people reject what you have to say? Yes. But when they do, you still have the love of Christ in you and express that to people so that they know you're a loving, forgiving person. Be used by God to do the will of God in the evil world in which we live. Oh, you look around us. It's a mess. And because the world was such a mess, Jesus came and gave his life to change it. And he changes it through what you do and how you pray and where you go and how you reach out in faith to someone around you. Let God use you to see the world around you impacted and changed by the grace of God. He gives grace and he forgives when people ask them, even you. Lord Jesus, use us to take your word and plant seeds of faith in the hearts of the people in the world all around us. And Lord, where we failed and where we've sinned and where we've done something that's wrong, Forgive us and strengthen us so that we don't do it again. And Lord Jesus, show us the path you have for us and lead us down that path in faith and empower us to do your will. In the name of the Father, the Son, 
and the Holy Spirit. Amen, amen, and God bless you, each one.